we're back here again, guys. Snurcast, what is up? How's everybody doing? Hope everybody's doing great. I uh, hope this quarantine isn't bringing everybody down. Uh, how is everybody's quarantine, by the way? Has it been going good? Yeah, everybody been uh, hopefully been keeping themselves busy, and uh, yeah, it's it's been pretty crazy. It's getting a lot harder too. <laughs> Summer's right around the corner. I mean. Technically, we're in the summer, right? Uh, if not, we're like at the the in between stage of end of summer and or end of spring and beginning of summer, sort of like right there at that transitioning period. But yeah, I hope uh, everything's been doing good. I just want to say real quick, this uh, episode's gonna be excuse me. This episode's gonna be a uh, a lot shorter than usual. Usually, it's about an hour, hour and a half of uh, footage or like me talking but uh, I have a couple of the works in the projects um, I have one project I'm really working on so uh, I'm trying to do a couple collabs too with some um, with some uh, some people on YouTube and stuff so trying just trying to get a lot of stuff uh, mixed, like put together um, also school it's finals next week and uh, I know it sucks though because I'm pretty much learn to fix medical equipment and it's kind of hard to learn um through uh watching somebody else do it on a webcam instead of me doing it there in person so you know what can you do as long as i'm getting you know the so-called education i just won't get the hands-on experience that i pretty much paid for that class but i'd rather finish it and not and i didn't have to repeat it you know so but yeah, just wanted to FYI everybody, if I've been kind of laggy on um, uploads and stuff, it's because school and just other projects I'm working on, so. And to be fair, it's been pretty stagnant in the last month or so since Resident Evil 3 came out. Not much news, not much has happened. Um, yeah, so. Uh, that's why I want to try to get more of, like, some more collabs going on, just so to have somebody else to talk to if I'm not just sitting here trying to think of stuff or, you know, trying to uh, come up with new content that pretty much when there's not much out there or not much coming out as for a while. So especially with the quarantine and everything getting kind of shut down and postponed. So, yeah. But yeah, going back to the quarantine, um, I uh, went actually bike riding the other day. I have a bike trail at my house by a river. And ooh la la, was there a lot of motherfuckers out there, like crazy lot, like straight up first day of summer, like everybody's off school and stuff, <laughs> you know, the first weekend, it was more than that, it was insane, um, I'm glad I had a little medical mask to put around, cause nobody was wearing one, everybody was really close to each other, there was people rafting, there was people sitting on like groups of like five to like 12 by the river which i mean you can't really blame people you can't keep them cooped up inside there's many people who want to get out and run away and like just get out of the house you know especially i know how some families can be and some of them can be pretty crazy and i'm sure there's other who are content with just staying home and just you know watching netflix or playing games or just doing household activities but you know some some people you just <laughs> you can't hold them in but yeah, it was it was crazy. And another crazy is, um, I guess we're like the second most infected location in the county or like in the area. So that <laughs> that doesn't help either. So it just lets you know a lot of people in my area aren't really taking it seriously. But they did expend. They I think they expend. They uh, extended the band right if I don't remember correctly uh, until like June or something like that, like the end like mid July. So. It got me a little worried because uh, my job, um, where I'm working at <clears throat> right now, uh, they had been closed for a while, and I heard they had to get a grant to keep on staying open. So I'm like, fuck, I, I didn't even think, what if I, I might not even have a job to come back to when all this is over. So, yeah, I got to do all that all that stuff. Um, luckily, I have some money saved up, and my stimulus check came in, so I'm actually doing all right for right now, but, you know. If it's gonna go all the way into June or July, then yeah, I need to I need to do I need to start taking some action. <laughs> Work at Taco Bell, get free Taco Bell. Give me free Taco Bell, Taco Bell. I love you guys. 
Yeah, it's it's crazy because I think some places like Texas and Florida and like some like a couple places around the world have kind of lifted the ban. So we'll see. I mean, it's gotten better. It's not it doesn't seem to. They it seems like it's peaked. I mean, we'll see. Like, because we did kind of halt it in the tracks with making pretty much everybody stay home and you know. I mean, I, I like I like not working. <laughs> I'm pretty sure there's a lot of people who are like, "Holy shit!" Like they're reevaluating their lives. Like, do I really want to do this for the rest of my life? Which is which I'm glad I'm almost done with school. So, yeah, um, it's just crazy living this life. All of us in this like the same position in this quarantine. And at first, it was really terrifying. You know, you like you don't know who's sick. You don't want to talk to anybody. And you know. Time went on two, three weeks, and people were feeling all right. And then, you know, a month went by, and now it's like two months, and now we're into the third month of quarantine. So, yeah, we're, uh, I think, I think the thing's been going good. Um, I just hope they don't get any worse. Uh, still no vaccine, as I, uh, as I heard, but there's people who are surviving. Um, I think last time I checked was a few. Like a week ago, I mean, it could have changed, but it looked like the mortality rate, people surviving over people dying, so it was uh, lower than people dying. So people recovering are less than people dying, but there's still a lot of people infected out there. It's like 200 million or something like that, or it's still, it's in the millions, so yeah, just keep on staying safe, you know, it's still out there, it's not, you know what I mean, it's not like it's gone away, <laughs> it's not like, uh, you know, just keep on washing your hands, be safe, you know, keep some hand sanitizer, and just know, I think it's stupid when people put the mask off and the gloves, and they go to the grocery store, and they're, they start touching stuff, you know what I mean, and just start grabbing, and, and then they touch their mask, and they touch their face, or just leave their mask on all day, and I'm like, you were touching all this stuff, and you touched your face, and now your mask is pointless, <laughs> you know, like, you're wearing your gloves, like, you wear your gloves, you put your groceries away, you're still wearing your gloves, you're going to your car, and, and it's like, the virus will survive on most things for, like, at least a couple of days, you know, so it's like, just, just more common sense, I would think more people had, or more common sense, I would think people would have, but, you know, what, what can you do, there's a, people are trying, though, I mean, you can't fault them for trying, and as long as people aren't dropping left and right, your neighbors aren't dropping left or right people, you know, <laughs> then, I mean, since this all happened, I don't think I've known anybody close to me that's gotten it, um, I have heard some stories of, like, cele uh, celebrities getting it, uh, a few basketball players have got it, like, a basketball player, his, um, mom got it, his mom and dad got it, but the dad recovered, but the mom just ended up getting really bad, got, like, ammonia or something like that, and she just, she couldn't fight it, I guess, which is sad. And that was, like, the whole thing was, like, it's unpredictable because, like, you hear stories of people who get it and they, you know, they just feel tired. They have, like, a runny nose or something. And then, you know, the other person next to them has it and they're, like, oh, like on the verge of death, you know. They have, like, it's, it's like a fever. They don't feel good. And it's pretty much dying. It's, it's crazy, you know. Like, has to do, it probably has to do something with genetics and immune systems and stuff, but... It's still crazy to, to think how unpredictable and how severe it can get like that, you know. Oh, sorry, microphone. But, yeah. Quarantine life, I guess, right? <laughs> so, the before I get on to, like, what I really, really want to talk about, there's a couple things um, I wanted to bring up. Which is, uh, first I'll bring up Maneater, which is this game coming out in May, or it is May, so the uh, end of May, uh, around uh, the 22nd, I believe. Yeah, the 22nd, so <clears throat> it um, it looks like a dope game. It's it's Shark Simulator, and I don't know how many people out there are, like actually played a lot of Shark Simulators, because there's really not many out there besides like some indie ones out there. Um... But the only, like, mainstream shark games that we got and, like, actually, like, you know, got some attention was Jaws in, like, 2006 or something like that. And it was another Jaws game on the Nintendo. So, <laughs> yeah, we haven't gotten very many uh, 
many shark simulating games, which I think is dope. I I love shark simulation games. If you're if it's done right, you could have tons and tons of hours fun fun hours with this. And um, I really I really hope that this does good and they treat it right. Um, from what it looks like, you get you start off as like a little baby shark and you can like work your way up to like freaking megalodon or whatever. But uh, I don't know if you can go up to megalodon, but you get stronger as you go up and you start getting be able to unlock these areas and new moves. You get uh, customized uh, uh, skins too, so you can make it like you can start putting stripes on it to so make it look like a tiger shark. I saw this one where it had like it looked like 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 bones or something, but like or like barnacles, and it just looked dope though. It looked like a like some like Pokemon shark or something like that. It looked crazy. Yeah, I think it's dope because you get like to fight like uh, what kind of the, like uh like other sharks to orcas to like killer whales. Um, orcas and killer whales are the same. Um, alligators. I think you can like fight squids or something. I'm pretty sure they're probably gonna have some like crazy prehistoric like creatures like a megalodon to fight or like a. You know, some, like, ancient crocodile. They did show, like, some big-ass crocodile, like, the apex crocodile or something like that. It looked it looked dope. Um, I think that was, like, the age-old question if a shark and alligator fought. Because shark uh, alligators can swim some crazy, like, 100 miles off into the ocean. Yeah, I, I guess there's, like, been rumors and stuff. And there's, like, simulations of sharks and alligators fighting. So I, I really would be curious to see who would win in a in a straight raw animal <laughs> battle between um, shark and crocodile but yeah this one looks dope I, I love shark games just being in the ocean just exploring the ocean eating stuff <laughs> you know just being a shark just <laughs> munching stuff you know you can munch on surfers you can attack boats and you get enemies people trying to kill you you get people trying to hunt you down and um yeah, I'm I'm not trying to look too much into it because I'm gonna buy this game and try to put some time into it. Um, I, I like I said, we don't get enough shark good shark simulating games, and the last the last good one I would say that I actually played. So there might be one out there, but the last one that I actually played was the Jaws one back in 2005 or six or whatever it came out, and yeah, yeah I, I that's when like. I would still rent games, <laughs> so that's how you know how long ago it was. Like I was, just, I was still renting games at Hollywood Video. So, and if any people who don't know who Hollywood Video is, look it up. Hollywood Video and Blockbuster. Those were that's what was. <laughs> those were the weekend plans: renting games at Blockbuster. Um. Yeah, but if you like, if you like uh, sharks, and you like animals fighting. Not animals fighting, but if you feel like uh, just being able to do what you want as like a realistic type of shark, this is the game for you. Like you should definitely check this one out because um, it it looks satisfying. That's that's like the best way I could put it. It looks like a satisfying game to play. Um, I don't know if it would be like a rewarding game, but it looks like when you play it, you eat people. You know, you get bigger. You fight other like uh, animals, out other creatures and stuff. So. I think it'll, it'll be something worth checking out. Um, yeah, so hopefully I get a day one. So you know, if you're watching this, check it out, please. Um, I don't think there's really any other games coming out. I know there's a bunch of them coming out for the Switch, like that are already out. Like games that are already out that are just like re-releases for the Switch. Um, so if you have a Switch, look out for this May calendar because there's a lot of games coming out for. Uh, yeah, for the Switch. Uh, I think there was a couple other ones. You know, let me let me double check. Yeah, so I have my phone right here, so I'm just gonna name a few like Arcade Spirits, Gun Crazy. This is all for the Switch. Um, John Wick Hex, uh, Task Force Campus, Campus, uh, Void Bastards, which was already on Xbox. Um, Spirit of the North. 80s Overdrive, yeah. So it's pretty much just a bunch of games, like a bunch of indie games, just like that, or games that have already been out that are coming out. Um, <laughs> Odd Worlds Odyssey, that's a good one to check out. I would definitely, if you have a Switch, check that out. Um, it's a good throwback. You are getting the Bioshock collection too, so I would definitely. That's Bioshock's is definitely one of my favorite franchises of all time. Um, I remember. <laughs> 
I don't know if I have it. I'm recording one where me and Will where he's talking. He's like, what? Where he's talking. He's like, what? He's like, which one's the worst one of all out of all the Bioshocks? And he was saying two was the worst one. And I was like, no, nah, two's pretty good. And and he was like, but out of all of them, two's the worst, right? And I was like, no. Nah. He's like, I just remember getting mad just because <laughs> I pretty much was saying even the worst one is like the best one. But yeah, it's it's a great storyline. Uh, I'm, I won't without spoiling anything. You fight big daddies. You gotta save little sisters, or yeah, I'll just call them little sisters. I don't remember. It's been a while. And you get crazy powers, and you fight other crazy people with powers. So check that out. Oh damn! Yeah, next month, you, The Last of Us Two. Yeah, for 2020, games was just not that exciting as it was last year. I feel like last year, every other month, it was just a banger, banger, banger. Everything that you got. Resident Evil at the beginning. Um, oh, I don't remember. It was just so many. I know, like... I don't know. It was There was a lot of them, though. You just, there was a bunch of games that just... Like, month after month after month. And they're interesting games, too, you know? Another thing I wanted to bring up before I go on to my main topic is they released a new teaser for um, Spider-Man Venom and that one is gonna look that one looks, I mean there's just a teaser Just they just re- re- uh, revealed what the name was uh, gonna be and it's called Let There Be Carnage which a lot of people I thought was like really cheeseball and really dumb but I mean what, what else are you gonna name it? <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, what's different from Spider-Man Homecoming or, you know, just, like, Iron Man 2? <laughs> Is that just what they wanted, just Venom 2? Like, just, it's all right. It's all right for them to have a little name for it, you know? Just let, who cares? Just let there be carnage. Um, I, I, I'm not mad with it, but I'd rather something than just Venom 2, <laughs> you know? Um, this one looks really got my attention and I've been wanting to see this forever I thought they were going to do that with the the last Spider-Man movie that just came out uh, that they were going to like maybe have a, like a little tease of um, Venom but it was MCU handled it so there's no Sony anything pretty much um, but I'm really curious to see which direction they're going to go with because they I think MCU has like another collab planned with Spider-Man but I think Sony's gonna like. I'm not gonna try to talk about this, but this is what I think. Like, I could be completely wrong, but I think Sony, pretty much has like majority of like direction of what the, what they're gonna go in. But yeah, this one um, looks pretty sick. I want to see Venom's interaction with Carnage, uh, Spider-Man's interaction with both Venom and Carnage. Like, is Venom gonna have to team up with Carnage, or is Carnage gonna like you know? see Spider-Man first and try to have him as an ally and then double cross him to try to kill both him and Venom and um Venom was a uh, Carnage is like a from what I remember is like a offspring or like a like a you know like a kind of like a clone experiment thing um same thing symbiote and he uh attaches to Cletus I think the dude's name is that turns pretty much into Carnage and he's a psychopath serial killer he's messed up in the brain so that's why Carnage is, you know, so crazy and weird because he has that serial killer mindset. He's, you know, he's, oh, it's just crazy. I, I, I really am excited to see where they're like, what the direction they're gonna go because I think they're making another Spider-Man movie. Like if I'm not, um, um, but yeah, Spider-Man. The only time we ever had a Spider-Man and Venom interaction was Spider-Man 3, which, I mean, if you don't already know, look it up, but it, I, I love, personally love the Tobey Maguire Spider-Mans, just like, you know, people go back and be like the, uh, uh, Batman Begins or whatever with, uh, <coughs> Michael Keaton as Batman, but, you know, those were like super cheese balls. same with the Tobey Maguire ones, and, I mean, that's where that freaking meme came with, my name, Jeff. <laughs> She's like, thank you, what's your name? My name, yes. <laughs> so stupid. Um, but, yeah, Spider-Man, they could do a lot of stuff with him, uh, this character, because he has a lot of unique villains. And you saw most of them, 
on screen, the ones we never really got to see was Carnage, because the fourth Tobey Maguire Spider-Man movie, if the third one didn't do, so, the third one didn't do so bad, the fourth one had Carnage, um, and somebody else too. I forget. I think we had Rhino, and which is another character they never really explored with. Uh, they had Electro, and they just did Mysterion. Um, but other than that, there's just not. I mean. They haven't really fletched out a lot of these characters, and I wouldn't even I wouldn't even mind if they brought back Green Goblin because the last Green Goblin they did was Bootsy, to my opinion. It was sucked. Yeah, just I'm glad they're giving Venom his own series though. You know, it's uh, it's not like he's part of Spider Man's movies or something like that. Like he Spider Man's gonna be part of his movie, so that's just what I wanted. I want something where it's like they kind of know each other or know of each other, like. Of course, Spider-Man's going to probably hear of Venom and vice versa. Venom's going to hear of Spider-Man. But I'd want to hear, like, a, I'd want something to be, like, um, like maybe they went to the same school. Or since he, like, maybe Peter wants to get into photography. And then he meets, like, he gets paired up with Brock or something. Or just some way they, like, kind of knew each other before. I, it would be pretty sick to for them to hear of each other. Um... But I really uh, and they're they're making the Morbius one. That one looks so dope. The Morbius, that one's more of um, it's kind of like Doctor Strange in a way, kind of not really, but they're both like super. I think they're both like super doctors or something like that, and then they like get fucked up and they almost die, and then you know they get their superpowers. <laughs> um, I'm gonna take my hat off. It's getting a little. But Morbius, um, yeah, they both got their powers like that, kind of, like, just from dying like that, and, um, he's gonna be something that's gonna be dope, too. I feel like he's more of, like, uh, those old Blade movie levels, where he's not, like, it's not, like, MCU style, where he, you know, they're flying in space, and they're having, fighting aliens, and, you know what I mean, people are jumping 50 feet in the air, and, <laughs> um, and then you have, like, a... It's like Black Widow level, you know? Like, it's movies like villains that maybe Black Widow could handle. Like, because, you know, everybody has... <laughs> I've said it before, it was like, uh, I think it was Avengers 2, where it shows everybody. It shows, like, Iron Man with, like, his guns, and it shows big-ass Hulk, and it shows Hawkeye with, like, three arrows in his hand, and it shows uh, Captain America where he throws a shield, and then you see Scarlett Johansson with her little foot... <laughs> with her little, uh... It shows Scarlett Johansson with her little foot out, she's, like, doing a little kick... And this is, like, really, like, everybody has all those badass powers. She has just, like, some sharp high heels or something. <laughs> I think it's hilarious that she's getting her own movie, but I guess it's more of, like, a just, like, a an over, an ode or something. Or, like, because, uh, yeah. I wonder what they're going to do with that, if they're going to release it on Disney Plus, or if they're just going to, you know, have you buy it, or... I don't know. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm just kind of curious to see what they're going to do with that. Because it's supposed to release at the end of this month. Or around this month. And I'm just kind of like, hmm. Because they're still going to want to make money off that, you know. Yeah, nothing really with Marvel Phase 4 either. Uh, what's that? Like, not much has been coming out with that. I did, did do the uh, the WandaVision thing. So, or the Doctor Strange movie and everything, so they've been they're promoting that, and they have the uh, they haven't really promoted much. The they have WandaVision. I think that was a Doctor Strange movie or the multiverse or whatever. Uh, they did promote a couple of them, especially back at the Super Bowl in the beginning of the uh, the month. But yeah, there has there they haven't been promoting much of, of it lately. I think they're just waiting until next year till they can start sh like showing the movies and I do want to see the Marvel What Ifs though because those look pretty dope. Like what if what if, I always like what if stories and uh, comics and all that stuff and you know just alternate storylines. Those are always pretty interesting for me. But yeah, Venom Two, Morbius. These are Sony. This is a good direction for Sony to go in. Um, I really am interested to see what they uh <laughs> what they're gonna do with this 
Uh, because they did do good with Dark Phoenix, but I think it just didn't really capture the more of the younger audience. To be fair, whatchamacallit, Infinity War kind of set the bar. Because even Endgame, as good as it was, wasn't as good as Infinity War, in my opinion. So, yeah, it was pretty hard act to follow. <laughs> Especially for these younger fans getting into the MCU. And they're like, what the hell? And it's like based in like the 90s or the eight, like the, like 80s or something like that. So, you know, of course, these kids can't get into it, really. But I do like those, uh, how they're setting like more of a foundation. You know, they're, they're taking a while to get there, but they're, you know... They're set, like they're setting the the blueprint, the ground floor for the the next on, on installations, and who knows? Like maybe they might even get a crossover with, um, you know, some X Men or Deadpool or something like that. Because they still do, they still own uh, Deadpool. Um, I think MCU has Fantastic Four rights and uh, Doctor um, Doctor Doom, but if not, Sony could try to do a little reboot with that and. They could, you know, try to do something with that, the Fantastic Four, and maybe they could do like a huge collab with all, like all those MC, uh, all those Marvel characters that they have. Because it would be pretty cool to see X Men, Deadpool, Venom, Spider Man, and Fantastic Four all, you know, <laughs> in the same kind of setting like they did with the uh, End Game and Infinity War. But I guess we'll just have to wait and see. My hair's a little messed up, but I guess we'll just have to wait and see because. Uh, yeah, everything's postponed, everything's shut down, so... Okay, so now this is what I really want to get into. So first, Resident Evil 3 Remake. Just to retouch really up on it, I really did my review and everything. Um, so if you want to see that, check out my last uh, podcast. But the little add-ons I would add to it is uh, more, more Nemesis, like, you know, chasing you around. Uh, more Nemesis encounters, I would say. Uh... And mercenaries, of course. How can you not have mercenaries? Just give us, you know, a free like two, two, three gig download for mercenaries. I would. I don't think anybody would be mad if you did that. Um, replayability was cool. I just beat it on nightmare mode, so I'm checking out Inferno. I haven't played it yet, but I heard it's a little different from nightmare mode. So, yeah. Um, good game i just feel like they focus more on online aspect when you know they probably try to surprise us but nobody really nobody really wanted that <laughs> um i'm sure there's some people probably a lot of people who enjoy that uh, there's nothing wrong with that i'm not you know but teach their own resident evil 4 though this was confirmed to have a remake so this is definitely going to be happening and this really grinded my gears, <laughs> Peter Griffin style. Um, this really bothered me. I was like, what? They don't need to do this. They, they, you know, like Resident Evil 4 is, in my opinion, perfect still. It still holds up today. Graphics aren't too bad. They've up to, they up, they uh, remastered it or whatever, redid it for the newer consoles. So when you play it, it runs at F, uh, 60 FPS. I mean, graphics aren't top notch but they're still acceptable in my opinion unless you're like some PC overlord that like runs everything on ultra max high and your eyes can only you know see that or are like so used to that which I don't blame you because if I could you know play games on super ultra max I would too but yeah I think in my opinion it would have been at least maybe five to like seven years before they try to remaster it um that might be too long for some people but we just we did just get two remakes in a row um just to kind of cut off onto like a little different tangent i think they they should have remade anything it should have been dino crisis and dino crisis is the one with the dinosaurs obviously dino and uh i never played those games because those like dino crisis resident evil like the first two and Silent Hill, like the first two Silent Hills, um, came out when I was like around that time when I was trying to jump into horror games as a kid, and I'm talking about like maybe six, if that, and they scared the fucking sh- <laughs> like I've probably pooped my pants a couple times playing those games. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, but they they really uh, these ones 
those ones are like they all came out at the same time and they all kind of have that same um formula with different you know aspects which in uh, it's which within their own rights their own game worlds they nailed the atmosphere atmosphere perfectly in my opinion um especially for that time they they really sucked the viewers in and you know if you weren't into demon spazzing monsters then your silent hill's not for you and if you're not into slow walking and then some weird experimented on zombies then that game's not for you uh and then if you're not into blasting dinosaurs with awesome guns and that game is not for you but that's the dope that's that's that was cool you know like if you like that game style and you just had like a, there's different genres to play but they all respectively in their own rights nailed each of the franchise like Konami did that perfectly with Silent Hill Resident Evil um, Capcom re- nailed Resident Evil and Dino Crisis perfectly which sadly they that game hasn't been touched in I don't think a long time because Dino Crisis was sick um, it's one of those games I would really like to go back and play but I don't own a Playstation in any form I mean I can get an emulator but I mean my computer I, I use, only use my computer for editing and I have a desktop that's from like 2004 that can probably run it but you know that's I'm not going to do <laughs> that that's, uh, what's, the, what's the point of that but yeah Capcom if there's any game you should try to remaster even if you use the RE engine Dino Crisis check that out so going back to the re, RE4 remake this one got me scared I looked a little bit into it but apparently it has a bigger team they're also uh, like then Resident Evil 2 had and Resident Evil 3. I don't know if it's a bigger team combined, but it definitely is a bigger team than both parties worked on for each game. Okay, sorry if I butcher this name, but they brought back Shinji Mikuni for, and that's the game director for the original uh, Resident Evil 4. And to me, there's two two things that can happen. And I guess you could take it, each of them with a uh, uh, grain of salt and be with your own opinion. So one good uh so one of them is he totally remakes it in the re engine looks great looks perfect all our favorite moments remastered redone in 2020 style you know what i mean today's style game um maybe with like a little add-ons or whatever like little new em- uh, new enemies or something like that but and that's scenario number one. Scenario number two is he completely has a reimagining of all of Resident Evil 4 and switches everything up and does maybe not too drastic, uh, drastically changes, but uh, like changes instead of going through the village, you have to, you know, instead of finding the village, you have to sneak through the village and not get caught or something. Like, there's just little things uh, that I could see in both ways, you know, because it kind of reminds me of The Walking Dead. And I don't know if he's telling the truth or not, Robert Kirkman, the guy who created it. He did the comic one way, obviously, and there's a bunch of changes, even from the start of The Walking Dead, <clears throat> of characters. And um, and throughout the whole series is different. And he said he didn't want to do the same thing twice. And he said he wanted to add some things that he felt he kind of regretted not regret but he kind of want to switch direction in a way and be like hmm instead of doing this maybe i could have done this better so obviously that's different because that's you know he's not really handling the the whole project on the the show obviously he's doing the comic but not the uh the show on amc but that's one of the things that's what i can get from it like from my opinion is it's either gonna he's gonna do exactly how everybody wanted to because the same guy working on it and or he's gonna you know kind of change it up not maybe not to the point where it's like unrecognizable but to the point where like hmm this is a Resident Evil 4 which I doubt honestly I don't think he would I don't think they'd um people making this game especially after the reaction for Resident Evil 3 would be like that but I mean they want to just want to do things a little differently and they want to you know I guess expand on um, what they've been creating or expand more on the idea which you're not going to satisfy everyone obviously of Resident Evil 3 so I'm, I'm using Resident Evil 3 and 2 as an example a lot through this but yeah you're not Resident Evil 2 
satisfied probably the majority of the fans that wanted a good old school Resident Evil game, especially since the last one was seven and the one before that was six. And they probably got some like weird ones like Umbrenical Chronicles in between all those. And But yeah, they went back to the roots with two and they, they did do it service like justice with the dodge mechanic and action and everything with three. Like I said, short story, um, just felt unfinished and no mercenaries. So, I mean, at least like do like the, some type of fourth survivor or something like that, you know, or like, you know, let me, let me play as a uh, Nikolai and through like, after he got shot on the helicopter, like, okay, what does he do? You know, he runs around, how does he survive or does he get a chance to survive or, you know, some, something like that, or just play as like a uh, Travis or something like maybe he's alive. I mean, there's, there's stuff. For Resident Evil 3. Um, so going back to 4. I just really hope they handle this one with care. And I hope they don't try to cash grab anything. Because it really. This. After 3. And now like already. The backlash. I think they were probably already working on 4. They just didn't want to tell anybody. But after 3 came out. They were pretty much like. Like 2 weeks after. We're like yeah. we're 4 is already in the making. Like we already started on it. So. Um, so who knows how far in progress they're into it. Uh, at least I don't know. I haven't done any uh, research, like super research into it. And the stuff that I did, I couldn't really find anything more than just it's in the works and it's been in the works for at least since RE3 came out. So um, if there's things I want to see differently or if expanded upon on Resident Evil 4, definitely there's a few characters, a couple characters that come to mind. Luis... And for whatever reason, he probably only has, like, <laughs> less than, like, 15 minutes, like, of all screen time, if that, you know, <laughs> for like, 10 minutes, 12 minutes, probably. And he just was a dope-ass character. I mean, kept, people fell in love with him. Uh, the way he died, died sucked, too. Um, so it would be cool to, like, maybe have, like, a little kind of, like, separate way scenario, scenario with... Uh, Luis maybe play as him throughout one of the stories like how they kind of switched up in RE3 maybe it would be kind of cool to see something like that though uh, I want to see more of backstory like where he's from why he's there because they kind of touched on it like he was kind of a detective type of dude like Leon but they didn't really at least from what I remember they didn't really touch upon it and I know people made a lot of videos if you search it up you can probably find videos of like who's Luis where is he from and everything um but yeah, he he definitely became a fan favorite, and he uh, I would like to see more of his backstory. Um, he had the and you know he has a dope accent. He had the red nine, and he was just suave. Like he had he was he was charming, bro. Fucking, he's a dope ass character. Um, so yeah, I would really like to see more of uh, Louis uh, Luis Luis. Louis, Louis, but yeah, I would really like to see uh, more uh, more backstory for Krauser and how him and Leon know each other. I can't wait to see his boss battle because he's out of all boss battles in that game. For whatever reason, he I always struggled with him just because he's always throwing stuff at you and you have to fight him for a second. He has a stupid like bone shield, whatever that is. Yeah, he's one of the characters I'd really like to see more uh, ex more expansion upon with the. Uh, with him, he is, uh, he's definitely one of those memorable characters and boss fights in that game, but I definitely, I just hope there's no cutouts, um, I want to see how the bosses look, like, all the bosses look, and I hope they have all the bosses, you know, the alligator, the, uh, El Gigante, um, I think his name's Caesar, the dude in, that's in the castle, has his castle, uh, all those dudes, his little one of his little minions, uh, the final boss, and that weird scorpion guy with the weird thing. Uh, I don't remember. That's where you get the broken butterfly, I think. But ours before that. Uh, and there's just so many things I really want them to see them do right. Uh, like the castle. When you get into the castle, and they all got the little hoods on. Like go hello, go hello, go. Morida's bibid, Morida's bibid, matalo. Yeah, I love that stuff, like the, the, coelho, coelho. 
Oh yeah, and the little the blind dudes with the the venom or the the venom the um, Wolverine <laughs> knives and stuff. Those are those are guys are pretty crazy. Uh, the regenerators. Oh my god, those guys terrifying as hell. Um, I even want to see the dude, the fat dude with the fucking the minigun. So yeah, there's there's just a lot. Um, Dr. Salvador or whatever, the dude with the chainsaw and the bag over his head. The Scissor Sisters or the Chainsaw Sisters. <laughs> um, yeah, there's just so much I want them to do. To, like, do right. You know, do right by Resident Evil 4 because 2 was good, 3 you pissed off a lot of people, and 4 now, like, you're going to be held to a standard at making this one. Like, a very high standard, so... This, in my opinion, for Resident Evil, uh, for Capcom, is either going to make or break them. Because if they don't do Resident Evil 4 right, I think only Resident Evil 7 fans are going to come back to play Resident Evil 8. So, yeah, I mean, in the next, they're going to probably make Resident Evil 5 or something like that. But we'll see. Yeah, that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about. But I, um,. Like I said, got some stuff in the works, so make sure to stick around. Make sure to, if you stick around this far, thank you so much for watching. I really enjoy you. Thank you so much. If you're new, make sure to like and subscribe. Comment on this video if you have your opinions, because I know I want to hear some people's opinions. Um, I hope everybody stays safe. Hope everybody's doing good, and you know we'll, we're getting through this, and we'll still get through this. We'll get through this together, people. Don't worry. It's it's crazy out there. Looks like it's about to get a little crazier, but. Uh, well, I mean, people-wise, so, yeah, they're anxious, but, like I said, you just keep washing your hands, try to stay away from big groups of people, like, more than five, um, just keep on keeping on, you know, keep yourself busy, if you're not working, keep yourself busy, and if you are working, thank you so much, like, your services are, <laughs> are mean a lot to everybody, so, thank you guys, all right. That's pretty much it. You guys have a good one. Schnurdcast out. Schnurd.